Hi, Common Sensor. Thank you so much for watching today's vlog. And please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Common Sense Mamita. Today, I am thrilled to have as my guest one of my oldest and bestest and dearest friends, Jason Stewart. Jason is an actor, stand-up comedian, producer, and gay rights activist. And I am so thrilled to have him here with me today. So welcome, Jason Stewart. Thank you so much. I love you, Jason. I love you too. Thank you. Yeah. He's like my brother. Yes. I love him. Yes, we've known each other, God, what, 30 something years? Almost 40. But uh, who's counting? Yes. So I want to start with um, your acting um, credentials okay. as far as your taking classes. Because having known you all this time, what I do know about you is that you were really serious about your acting career. And you were determined to get the best acting teachers. You really went in pursuit of great training. So I want to talk about... It's so funny yes. that you said that because it never even occurred to me that that's what I was doing. But you were. But why would I not want the best teacher? Right. I'll say to somebody, the kids that I mentor now, and I'll say to them, you know, hey, who are you studying with? Oh, it's this guy. How'd you meet? Well, someone told me, do you like the teacher? Well, she's okay. I never was in that class. She's okay. Ever. We always wanted the best. I didn't even think that I wanted it. It wasn't a want. It was like, it was like an assumption that why would I go to anybody else who wasn't? The only one I didn't go to was Stella, and because I, I, was, I was afraid of her because I had heard she was so mean. She was. And I went to Nina, was, Nina instead. That's right, you went to Nina. Which was just as mean, yeah. but she wasn't as mean to me because I wasn't a pretty girl. So, Nina Foch. I was more. at Roy okay. London, of course, because of you. Or did, did yeah, I bring you? I brought you in You brought there. me. Roy London, Ivana Chubbuck, Jeffrey Tambor, now uh, Larry Moss, uh -huh. Alan, Doug, Miller, Doug, Alan Miller, Alan Miller, Doug, Doug Warhead, Warhead, Harvey Lembeck of the Groundlings. Uh, Howard Fine, more people that I can't even remember. But Lawrence Park was my first, and that was when I was 14 till I was 16, and not many people knew him, but he was extraordinary on technique and really taught me about improv. I can do improv dramatically or comedically, and that's my mainstay. That's been my strongest attribute as an actor, probably. One of your other, I think, best attributes as an actor is your diligence to prepare. I read a book on uh, that Anthony Hopkins wrote, and he said, I read the script a hundred times. Yes. I don't know if he reads it a hundred times, but, yeah, what, he but meant he... Is he, what he meant to say, I think, what, his, what he was trying to give to us is say, you read it until things come, and all of a sudden something comes that you don't see on the page. It happened to me the other day when I was doing a self-tape audition for a part in a movie, and I thought, this this is I don't know what this is it's just dialogue about what I'm doing it doesn't you know and then I realize oh my god this guy's teaching and the other thing that's amazing about you is that your learning has never stopped I mean you still are taking classes I always wanted to do Virginia Woolf so mm -hmm. I'm working on Virginia Woolf now and uh -huh. I'm working on the part of George and even if I don't get to go to Larry Moss's class I'm still just working on it just for me now and I just read it over, read it over, and see what happens. And I play both parts. One of the things that I think is your strength is that you will mine a, a piece and keep going and going and going at it. Not always. And I heard people, because I was here for one of your other shows, and I heard them taping and saying that, you know, you must do Shakespeare, you must do this. I think there's a, you have to realize also what your strength and your weakness is. I'm never going to do Shakespeare. It's just something I'm, number one, I'm not that interested in it. And number two, it's not me. Uh, I like stylized things, definitely, but it doesn't interest me enough. But what really interests me is certain writers and certain people. So I try to go where my strength is. I notice, you know, for me, big hospital words with being a doctor and then it's not, I'm never, I'm never going to be good at that. I don't even want to be good at it. So you learn what you like, what you don't like, what you're good at, what you're not good at. When I prepare, sometimes something will come so naturally to me even the substitutions and the action in the scene. See, classes, I think a lot of people become professional students, and that doesn't work. Working in a class and working on a set is completely different. I've done so many shorts, and I've done so many independent films. I've done probably at least 25, 30, 40 shorts, and another 20, 25, 30 independent films, maybe 20. And uh, what I realize is that, number one, come prepared, most of the time. They, you know more than they do, 
or at least I felt like I knew. And I realized after a while that I was older than everybody and I did know more than they did. So what I had to do was to be kind, to be generous. If I felt that something needed to be done, I would say to the director off to the side very quietly, hey, don't you think you should do the hands when I, do, when I pick up those poker chips? Wouldn't that be great? And he said yes. And they usually go, oh, that's a great idea. Or we're not doing this because. I did a recent film where the other actor was not capable of going to the depth that he needed for that scene. So what the director did was smart enough, and I didn't know, but I just was quiet. Don't react first, listen and watch. And what they did is they cut the middle of the dialogue, they did an insert of something to show what was going on, and they had me just walking off and saying my lines. They said, you're gonna do that as a voiceover now. And I was like, fuck no, in my head. But I said nothing. And I thought, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be so full when I walk over there does this that he's not going to not want to use this take. And he said, God, no, that's not going to be a voiceover right after it. And we tried to recreate that take over, and I couldn't. It was just this little smidge that something happened at that moment. And I could recreate it, sort of, but not, not there was just same. something, right. there was just something extra. The magic was there. Yeah, it just happened. And what happened was, fuck no. <laughs> that's what happened. In, in class, class is great. You should go in there, you should be bold. Some class teachers will teach you to be a star. I was in a lot of classes that wanted me to be a big star. I already was a big star in my head. I didn't have to learn to be a big star. It never was the right thing for me. I'm a character actor. I was in Larry Moss's class recently doing California Suite, and the gal that I was doing with it, it was, we were doing the uh, uh, London Visitors, and the, she was having trouble being a big star. And Larry said, Jason's a much bigger star than you are. You have to really, you know, and I thought, oh my God. That was happened around four years ago. And I realized that I have to be really mo even more sensitive. You know, I have to be careful because I'm working with somebody. And what he was trying to do was, was put a fire under this woman. But in class, you learn to do all those things. You learn to know where you are. It's a gym but, to but, work but, out. But a lot of people will want them to say, be you, be who you are. And sometimes when you're so young, you don't even know who you are. Like now I'm going deep into my 40s and 50s, and I know who I am, which is why I'm working on Virginia Woolf, why I'm working on parts in, in little films that I've never done before. I look really unattractive. You're, you're retuning your branding. Your... I don't think of it as like that, because I want to stay in the art when I do that. It's real important for me to, to divorce the art from the business. So I see it as me growing as an artist, because if I don't have fun and I don't feel like an artist and everything feels like it's this job branding, you know, then it just, it's not fun for me. So now I'm just finding out who I am as an older person. Now when I'm done with the movie, I call up the director and I say, hey, thank you for being, this was a great experience. If you need me to do anything, I'm in. I have this much social media. I just got this big movie come out. I can help you with this. I have a publicist, I have an assistant. This is what I'm doing. What do you need me to do? I'm there for you and I make sure they know. Or if it's a bigger movie, I call the publicist on the film and say, this is who I am. And if you need me, I'm there. And I, I just keep showing up. So let's talk about asking, because we, we had talked about it's important to know what to ask for. When you're on a set, I did an episode of The Drew Carey Show that Drew Carey had actually given me the part. It was my first guest starring role. And I was frightened. And I thought that I couldn't do it. I just was so scared, because I waited so long to have a good part on something. And they were really all upset on the show because the actual episode wasn't working. There was problems in the writing. The whole show was about how the uh, appliance department where he worked in was having these sporting events using the uh, appliances. Now, I'm so crazy that I've got this part and so, you know, not talking to anybody. I want them to think that I know how to do everything just like that, you know, that I thought these things were real because I was so afraid to ask. And I went to a girlfriend of mine's house. I had her work with me until I knew it cold went in the, on Monday, did it, and then realized after I did it, because I never asked anybody anything, that this was something they made up for the episode. And they were having trouble with electronics. It had nothing to do with me. And it was the best lesson I could have learned. I honestly almost called Drew on that weekend and said, I don't think I can do this. I was going to tell him that I was really, really sick and I was having a heart attack. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I was like 20-something. I don't know. What, I was like, maybe it was 30. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was, and I was just like so completely crazy. But it's because I never asked a question. I never said, what is this? How does this work? I didn't know what I was doing, and I was the manager of the appliance department. Who was your best acting teacher to, oh, to date? It's different things for different reasons. Ivana Chubbuck gave me confidence because she always treated me with such respect in the class. 
I remember once she said to me, I did Marty, that's the film mm -hmm. with Ernest Borgnine, it's a very famous independent film, it's the first one that won Best Picture, and I played the straight guy, I talk like this, and I did this guy's very mm -hmm. shy. She says, how did you do that? How did you connect with playing a straight guy? I said, that's who I am. I just happen to be gay, but that's who I am. I'm not who you think I am. I'm not this flamboyant guy. That's something that happened because I didn't have a choice. So that's what I learned from her in that class. From Lawrence Park, I learned structure and how to improvise and how to build a character. From Roy London, I learned action. From Nina Foch, I learned hot prop. Always have a prop. I use my glasses all the time as a prop. I use keys. I try to use things that are simple, not to distract that from. That you can bring with you without yes, being Yes, real life. I try to have obvious. real life. Yeah, unless it's a director that, you know, I was doing a movie called Coffee Date, and I played the manager of the office. I didn't know how to play this part because it was the same thing every scene. I played this character that they thought this guy was gay and he wasn't. And I was the one that kept asking him the same questions over and over again. And when I got to the set, there were these little windows and the partitions between it. So when they were shooting other th scenes, I just sat in my cubicle. I never left it. And then when they came to shoot every scene, I had to go, hi, Todd. And I just knocked on the window of that thing. And it was so funny. And the script, it said he went over. And I didn't do that because I saw the windows. And, I thought, and he thought, oh my God, this is the funniest thing. That film was very, artistically, was a big change for me because I took all these risks. And he, Stuart Wade, who directed the film, was also really kind to me. 